What is going on, YouTube? We are going to take a look at the Magic the Gathering Starter Kit. This is a brand new edition of a starter kit that we reviewed a few months back. Um, that one, I believe, was the Arena Starter Kit, and this one doesn't say Arena on it. However, it does say that it comes with the Arena codes, so maybe they're reshuffling their thought process and are going to um, strictly not advertise Arena on a physical product. Maybe they heard some players' cries and there was some discontent with them advertising for their digital card game in person. Either way, these are a fantastic way to learn how to play Magic the Gathering. It's a really simple um, two color uh, deck setup where you've got two decks that are both dual colors that have some pretty powerful cards in it so you do feel like you're playing good Magic the Gathering and you get to the benefit of um, playing these on Arena I know we just kind of mentioned that they're not advertising it <laughs> pardon me I still have a bit of a, a sore esophagus and it just tenses up sometimes um so this one's intriguing because the last one we had kind of two i guess kind of clear ideas of what the decks were going to do from the outside and from where i'm sitting i cannot tell what these two decks uh, want to do perhaps um life gain and just pure jund aggro one of our decks is azorius the other one is jund um the nice thing about them continuously updating these starter kit products is that there is a very good chance that there's going to be some new hot cards in here and you can tell by the two featured cards on the outside of the the decks that. Uh, we've got Welcoming Vampire from Innistrad, Crimson Vow, and then we've got Thundering Raiju from Kamigawa. So they're already updating these decks with the new and improved cards. Um, yeah, so let's just jump right in and take a look. I'm going to switch off uh, my cam so we get more card goodness. So this is the exact same box and setup as the last starter kit let's open this bad boy and see if there's anything different wizards has been updating a lot of their packaging and this one does not look like it's been updated which is a bit of a disappointment yep on the back here it says two ready to play 60 card decks each with five rares and a code for you and your <coughs> pardon me for you and your friend to receive these decks in magic arena the interactive online tutorial will take you through all the basics you'll be ready to battle in no time um, and it comes with a magic play guide two codes a couple of deck boxes and two ready to go 60 card decks so it looks like there's a couple of different cards that they're showcasing on the back here we've got dream shackle geist which is a really great spirit um and ascendant pack leader which is a really powerful one drop in green well it looks like they've got some put some thought into these these decks just like the last one i would say that the last starter kit also had some really great um decks in it so we've got these little paper deck boxes which is nice and all, except for the fact that they don't fit the decks once you've sleeved them. So, a tiny little deck box. If you wanted to be an absolute savage and just immediately throw these decks into deck box without any sleeves, then they'll fit in here perfectly. So, right here we've got our foil. Um... For the Azorius deck, it's Welcoming Vampire. Two and a white for a 2-3 Vampire with Flying. Whenever one or more creature with power two or less enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. This 
ability only triggers once per turn. Let's open up this Azorius deck and then we'll jump over to the Jun deck. Again, this uh, we got a second cheap little deck box. I would not suggest using them. If anything, they're just going to damage your cards and that's not fun. Pardon me, I just need a quick slurp of water. All right. So we've got our headliner, Welcoming Vampire. The box does say that it comes with five rares in each deck. Um, so we'll take a look. Five rares in each deck or five rares total? Each with five rare cards. Five rares in each deck. So I do want to test out these decks on Arena uh, to see which one feels better to play because um, I won't have an opportunity to play them against each other right here. But I do want to give away these decks so I'm going to show you this arena code right now and it will unlock both starter decks for you if you're the first one to redeem it so what do we have here we've got let me move my mic in a little <coughs> pardon me gosh darn so we have Extraction Specialist, two and a white for a 3-2 two, two human rogue with lifelink. When Extraction Specialist ETBs, return target creature with mana value two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. That creature can't attack or block for as long as you control Extraction Specialist. That creature can't attack or block, so you want to get rid of Extraction Specialist? You want to bring it out and then... Get rid of it. Dream Shackle Geist, which is great. Uh, one blue blue for a 3-1 spirit with flying. At the beginning of your combat on your turn, choose up to one tap target creature or target creature doesn't untap during its controller's next untap steps. You can either tap something or freeze something. And uh, it's really nice to have in a spirit deck. And then we've got, ooh, baby, a Hullbreaker Horror. That's a rare... Five blue blue for a seven eight Kraken Horror with flash. This spell can't be countered. Whenever you cast a spell, choose one. Return target spell you don't own to its owner's hand. Return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. So bounce things whenever you cast spells. We've got consuming tide, two blue blue for a sorcery. Each player chooses a non-land permanent they control. Then return all non-land permanents not chosen this way to their owner's hands. Then you draw a card for each opponent who has more cards in their hand than you. And then we get into the common and uncommons. We've got some unholy officiants, some backup agents. Not a great card. And they put three of them in here. Uh, unholy officiants, not that bad. I mean, the one, two with vigilance. So that's really good for a one drop early on in the game. Um, and their activated ability, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Unholy Offic Officiant, is 5 mana, which is really steep, but it does make this card uh, worthwhile in the later stages of the game. So if you draw your 1-drop on turn 7 or 8, it's still not terrible. Um, then we've got Wretched Throngs. Uh, this is the throng that searches up other throngs from your library so as soon as you play one you get to go searching through your library to find the other three that you have in your deck because this deck comes with four of them 
not so bad so far inspiring overseer is a really good card uh two and a blight for a two one flying angel cleric whenever inspiring overseer enters the battlefield gain a life draw a card uh it's not great then we've got brute suit which is vigilance crew one four three for three pretty decent vehicle seven tail mentor which is on the front of the box here the poster child for this uh starter kit and it is three and a white for a two three samurai box when it etbs or dies put a one one counter on target creature or vehicle but not terrible not great and we've got some storm rider spirits flash flying nebel gas beguiler this is a pretty decent card pay one to pay one and tap beguiler to tap another creature a nice little control mechanic serpentine ambush change something into a five five kill shot destroy target attacking creature another brute suit some fading hopes this is a really good card actually this sees a lot of play uh return target creature to its owner's hand if its mana value is three or less scry one and then we've got some lands we got four tranquil coves so four dual lands and then we've just got a pile of planes and a pile of islands and it looks like we've got new Capenna, amigawa and crimson vow for the lands it's not too bad it's a pretty interesting deck it's a little controlly it's A little life gainy actually kind of interesting it is a little weird that there's not a lot of tribal action going on we've got vampires we've got humans we've got citizens we've got zombies we've got angels I feel like it could have been better However, I feel like that's a pretty strong lineup for an out-of-the-box Azorius deck. Now, let's take a look at our uh, Jun deck, which is red-green. And the poster child is Thundering Raiju, this beautiful, shiny version of Thundering Raiju. open this up this code I will keep secret so that I can redeem it on the store and test out these decks so far and this could just be me being an absolute fan of the Hullbreaker horror so far and the Dream Shackle guys but Hullbreaker the card was on my wish list for a very long time and just getting one so these these starter kits only cost like twelve dollars the original one was like nine dollars and i guess they've marked up the price a little bit so this one was like 12.99 canadian And we've got a learn to play token. So our first rare out of the bag, other than Thundering Raju, is uh, Ascendant Pack Leader, which is a really strong one green for a 2-1 wolf. Uh, when it ETBs, Ascendant Pack Leader enters the battlefield with a 1-1 counter on it if you control a permanent with mana value greater 4 or more, which... Our poster child is mana value four. Uh, whenever you cast a spell with mana value four or greater, put another one one counter on ascendant pack leader. So the more you play big boomies, the bigger pack leader gets. Next one up is creepy puppeteer. Three and a red for a four three human rogue with haste. Creepy puppeteer attacks. If you attacked with exactly one other creature this combat, you may have that creature's base power and toughness become 4-3 until end of turn. 
So you attack with Puppeteer and something else that's smaller. You can make that something else a 4-3. So they're like being puppeted. Ooh, we've got a Topiary Stomper. This is a fun little card. Uh, this is a one green green for a 4-4 four, four plant dinosaur. So automatically it's a good card. Three mana for a 4-4. Four, four. That's just good math. Um, it has Vigilance, and when Topiary Stomper enters the battlefield, search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield, tapped, then shuffle. Topiary Stomper can't attack or block unless you control seven or more lands. So it just sits around until you control seven lands, but it helps you get lands. Then we've got Glorious Sunrise, a really good card uh, from Crimson Vow. It's three green green for an enchantment. At the beginning of combat, choose one. Creatures you control get a 1-1 one, one and gain trample until end of turn. Target land gains tap to add 3 green until end of turn. Draw a card if you control a creature with power 3 or greater, or gain 3 life. Pretty good card. And then we get into the commons and uncommons, and funnily enough, we've got a vampire right out the gate, which should have been in the other deck. Well, Darren Stinger, uh, 1 mana 1-1 one, one that has fire breathing. We've got uh, two of those. We've got two, three, four Timberland guides. One in a green for a 1-1. One, one, uh, when it ETBs, put a 1-1 one, one counter on something. Uh, four of those is, seems a little extreme. We've got Lambholt Carrier. One in a red for a 2-2. Two, two, and then four mana and something can't, be, can't block. High Rise Sawjack. Three mana for a 2-3 with reach. And then whenever it blocks a creature with flying, high rise gets plus two, plus zero. So it becomes a four, three. That's not bad. Four crawler, when it dies, it draws a card. Red Knight, uh, ETBs with a one, one counter on it. If an opponent lost life this turn, well, five mana and it could enter as a six, five. Pretty good with trample too. Uh, Flourishing Hunter, when it ETBs, uh, you gain life equal to the toughest, um, greatest toughness among other creatures you control. It's pretty cool. Witch's Web, something gets a 3-3 three, three and gains reach until end of turn. A Braid deals 3 damage or destroys an artifact. This is a great staple. Braid staple. I think a Braid would be a Masterclass card if it was 1 mana, but... Having the modular card, uh, Burn the Accursed deals 5 damage to target creature and 2 damage to that creature's controller for 5 mana. Um, the nice bit about Burn the Accursed is that if it dies, if the creature dies, it gets exiled instead of goes to the graveyard. And then we've got uh, 4 Rugged Highlands and some basic lands. So if I were to... Wait, let's switch this around. If I were to grade these right out of the box without knowing how they play, I would say I would probably give. They're really close. They're really, really close. I think the Jund deck does what it wants to do clearly. It might need a little bit of setting up, but it's not too far off. Again, with all these starter kits, you're getting a lot of like fundamentally cool cards from recent sets that uh, can and will help you not only build your collection, but also have two little standard decks that are ready to go. I think I would pick the Azorius one, but again, that's I like to play blue cards. So is it worth the money? The really easy answer is yes. The more difficult answer is if you're if you're actually thinking about monetary value. Just these 10 cards here are worth more than what you pay for the starter kit. Uh, one sec.
So a Hallbreaker Horror used to be really expensive and has since come down quite a bit. But it is still over a few dollars. Um, stuff like Welcoming Vampire is a few dollars. You're looking at, for the foil version, like five bucks. Uh, Dream Shackle Geist is pretty good. It's not getting a lot of play. Yeah, it's just a few. Dream Shackle Geist is pretty low down there. Extraction Specialist. Is pretty low down there. And just based on today's current value, the Azorius deck alone pays for almost more than half of what you make or what you paid for the starter kit. Are these decks fun to play? Without playing them, I would say that they probably are. Um, are they great examples of what magic can do? I think the Jund deck is definitely a great example of what Jund can do. I'm not sure that the Azorius one is a clear example of what Azorius can do. That's not to say that it isn't going to be uh, fun to play or anything, but I think there's a version of this deck that would be more fun to play, and there's a version of this deck that would be more powerful, but they do seem on the surface to do exactly what they're supposed to be doing, and I commend them for that. I will use my code to put them in Magic Arena, and then we'll, sometime this week maybe, we will test them out. Um, I will try to get someone in person to come over and we'll test out these these decks in person and see which one plays better against the other one. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Thank you so much. Again, these are available at um, almost anywhere you can buy Magic the Gathering products. The starter kits are really great ways to break into uh, Magic the Gathering. Not amazing ways to break into collecting although there are a couple of good pieces in these two decks um what you're really looking for in this product is two ready to play decks out of the box with two very different ways to play magic the gathering and i think i think this is achieving it i think this lineup is really great i think you'll have a lot of fun playing it i think there's a lot of there's a lot of buzzwords and magic things that are happening on these cards that you'll have to learn in order to become comfortable playing magic. And a lot of these cards have that stuff on it. So you've got this nice little glossary uh, with this play guide. And this is really designed to introduce you to Magic the Gathering or help you introduce someone else to Magic the Gathering. Sometimes as we build these decks um, and we tweak everything for hours on end and we play them against each other and we try to make the most compelling and imaginative deck, we can lose the sauce of where the power level is in comparison to, say, a new player. Um, so this product here is really fantastic because you've got two fairly even keeled decks if anyone you know is thinking about getting into Magic the Gathering or wants to play and you don't have the collection or the time to build two starter friendly decks, air quotes, air quotes, um, then this is the perfect product for you. It's also giving you those arena codes um, that you can redeem on the digital platform and play these cards. Uh, online which helps you get used to the cards. I think my favorite thing about Magic Arena is that I get to see interactions. I get to play with cards and see how to make those decisions properly. Um, 
you just get the reps in on arena whereas you don't necessarily get the reps in in paper um even though i wish i could so overall do i recommend you getting the starter kit 100 percent, i do even if you're a seasoned magic player um there's two really strong re compelling reasons to get the starter kit as someone who's not new to magic the first one is the few cards that you get with it that are staples um especially in today's magic um environment one of the nicer things about both of these decks is they come with dual lands so and they're the game health dual lands so that's really popular it might just be worth it to buy this set to get eight gain land duels or gain life duels stuff like hullbreaker stuff like topiary stomper stuff like the thundering raiju welcoming vampire consuming tide these are all cards that can be played in competitive magic and that is one reason to buy them as a seasoned magic player the other reason to buy them as a seasoned magic player is to just have two decks on hand that you know are more new player friendly keep them with this little starter guide give your friend or family member or whoever you're teaching how to play magic this little starter guide because this has a great glossary in it that tells you everything you need to know about all of the buzzwords and um, anything that might come up during the game it tells you how to like look and read cards it tells you how to play cards how to activate things how to set up your board it's a very strong tool and that's that's reason number two to have it is to just have two two decks on hand in your backpack in your drawer anyone comes up to you and says hey i want to play um i want to learn how to play magic how do i learn how to play magic bust out these two decks and say hey flip a coin choose a deck i'll show you i'll walk you through there's not a lot of pacing um and tempo stuff in these decks so there's, it's going to be a slow roll uh, for both the sides of this coin. So, yeah, flip a coin with someone you're trying to teach magic. Pick one of the decks and, and have fun. I think if you're brand new to magic, this is a fantastic buy. If you're not new to magic and you've got a vast collection and you play magic all the time, this is also a fantastic buy. I think everyone should own these. And that's what I have to say about that. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope this was relatively helpful to somebody. I wish that they made more products like these with new players in mind. Magic's been around for a very long time and it becomes very difficult to break into the hobby because so many people know everything and it's very intimidating. This is a fantastic product. Definitely go buy it. Big thumbs up. Thank you so much, wizards. Peace out. And thank you for watching this video. If you're watching it on YouTube. If you're watching it on Twitch, then thank you for being here right now. If you're watching it on YouTube, maybe you should follow my Twitch. Twitch.tv slash erp. There's a link in the top of my YouTube channel. I appreciate you watching this video. Please give it a like, a thumbs up, leave a comment. Let me know if you have bought one of the starter kits, any of them. There's been a few so far. Uh, let me know which of these two decks you think is better. If we had a pro magic player play both of these decks a hundred times, which one is winning more games? Tell me in the comments below, throw me a sub, say hi. I appreciate your time and I hope you're doing great. Uh, we'll catch you on the next plane.